Hi, everyone. Good morning. What's today? Uh, Tuesday, April 21st. How are you today? I hope that you slept good and are doing well. Um, it was fun to see everyone at our Zoom meeting yesterday. And um, some of the boys, their hair is getting really long. Um, it's always fun to talk. And we got to see Sophia Star of the Week stuff. So let's get started for today. Jesus always. This is called the Thankful and Joyful Heart. The Lord of those who are right with God is joy. That means you can look forward to joy because you are my child. I lived a perfect life for you without any sin, and I died in your place, taking all the punishment for your sins. This made it possible for me to cover you in my own robe of righteousness and perfection. I want you to wear these clothes of salvation with so much joy and thankfulness that your heart overflows. A thankful, joyful heart will help you live a good life that makes me smile. Starting off your day with this kind of positive attitude will make your joy grow even more. And as your joy grows, your thankfulness also grows, and so on, in a happy cycle that keeps going and going and going. When you feel your joy fading, give it a boost with some thanksgiving. Read verses from the book of Psalms or sing songs of praises to me. Making a list in your mind or on paper of the blessings in your life is another great way to give thanks. I want you to remember the great things I have done for you because this will fill you with joy. That reminds me of... Um, this Bible study that I did one summer with some of my teacher friends. And one of the things that we had to do one day, uh, the teacher had us write down a hundred things we were thankful for. And when I first heard a hundred, I said, oh my gosh, I can't think of a hundred things that I was thankful for. And I got started writing and in no time at all, I went over a hundred. I couldn't believe that, um, as I got going, just things kept coming to me, coming to me. So uh, be thankful for all the wonderful things that you have in life. I'm sure you can even think of a hundred or more. Oh, sorry, I'm moving the camera. Okay, let's take a look at math. I wanna make sure that my video is not 35 minutes today. Yesterday I was talking too much. <laughs> so let me pull up our math. How'd you do on yesterday's? Did you do all right? And this is gonna be similar. Um, this will be similar to yesterday's math. So lesson 10, four, let's read the top example. So these are more arrays. Arrays are a group of objects in rows, which go this way, and columns, which go this way. Ben has four rows of photos. Each row has three photos. He wants to put the photos in three equal rows. How many rows or how many photos should he put in each row? All right, so let's look on this side. Find how many photos Ben has. There are four rows of three photos. So here's row one, row two, row three and row four, and each row, there's three. So that would be like adding three plus three plus three plus three, which gives you 12 photos. Or you could switch it around and do it this way. Show the photos in three equal rows. So we have three rows and in each row is four photos. So then you would have four plus four plus four. Both arrays have the same number of photos. So Ben should put four photos in each row. Does that make sense? I hope so. Let's look at um, number one together. Complete 
the equation for each array. Okay, so we have purple triangles. I see five rows, and in each row, I see three purple triangles. Do you see that? Let me take my little pen here. So here's row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, and in each row, one, two, three. So what would I put down here? I'm gonna have three plus three plus three plus another th three plus another three gives me 15. Three, if you're good at counting by threes, six, nine, 12, 15. We can also do three rows of five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's counting by fives. Five plus five plus five should give me the same thing, right? As my other one gives me 15. Do the arrays have the same number of objects? Remember, this is an array, a group of objects, and this is an array. Do they have the same number? Yes, they do. They have the same number, they're just arranged differently, right? Right, all right, so let's look at the next side. All right. Um, let's see, draw a different array that has the same number of objects. Write an equation for your array. So what is a different way that you could draw? This one has three rows of two. What's a different way that you could draw it? I, did you say you could do two rows of three, right? I could do. Now, what kind of equation could I write down here for this? I could write how many rows do I have, right? I have two rows and in each row I have three. So I would say three plus three equals six. If I had to write an equation for this one, I would write two plus two plus two equals six. Down here, describe two arrays that have the given number of objects. So if you have 16 marbles, you'll have to tell two different ways that you could make it. Blank rows of blank marbles and a different way. Blank rows of blank marbles. Problem solving. Okay, that looks like two rows of nine. That doesn't look too hard. And then a different way. And down at the bottom, okay, it says explain how an array with four rows of five objects and one with five rows of four objects are the same. Remember, I'll give you a hint. They always have the same answer. The only thing that's different is how you arrange them. So hopefully that will help you when you're answering. Let's take a look at the next page. Yeah, my arrow should be coming up here, but it hasn't been coming up. Oh, where did you go? Where did you go? All right, that's what I was looking for. There's that arrow. Um, except this is the wrong page. That's what I wanted. More practice. Draw a different array that has the same number of objects as the one shown. 
write an equation for your array. Okay, so this first one has four rows of five. What's a different way that you could draw it? Just switch the two numbers around. If, if I have four rows with five circles, I'm gonna switch it and I'm gonna say I have five rows with four circles. I'm just gonna switch, switch the number around. Remember rows are this way and um, columns are this way. So if this one is two rows of five, what could I draw for my picture? Switch those around, two rows of five. So I would want five rows of two, okay? And then it says that you have to write an equation for your picture. So make sure that you do that, you have enough room to draw and you have room here um, to write your equation. You can always look at this example at the top to help you. And then on the back, describe, now why did that happen? That's stuff from my reading class. See, sometimes this technology is goofy. All right, guys, sorry about that. <laughs> describe two arrays that have the given number of objects. All right, number one says eight stamps. What are two ways that I can put uh, stamps in rows? Two different ways. I have eight of them. Blank rows of blank stamps. Blank rows of blank stamps. So a different way. Could I do four rows of two? And I could switch it around and say two rows of four. So you're going to try that for number two with 10 and number three with 16. Number four, what does that one look like? Okay. So both boys arrange their blocks differently, but it is asking you to tell how many blocks they use. Remember, they both use the same amount. They just arrange them differently. And the last one, how do you make an array for a given number of objects? Ooh, that's a tricky one. How do you make an array? So how do you make the arrangement of shapes for a given number of objects? Well, you would need to know how many rows you need, right? And you would need to know how many are in each row. So maybe that will help you when you're answering your question. Let me go back now and find our religion. Where are you? Here it is. All right, so for religion today, it is chapter 13 review. It's two sides, page 207 and 208. Um, I want your mom or dad to take a picture of both sides and have them text it to me or email it to me um, because that is how I get to grade some of your stuff. I have to get a picture of it um, so that I can put your grade in power school. So this is a review of this chapter. Um, at the top, part A says, draw a line to connect the parts of each sentence. Part B, you're gonna circle the best answer. Let's take a look on the back. a couple of questions to respond to. Now, if you don't remember some of these things because it was last week, right? Because yeah, yesterday we had something different. Um, it's always okay to go back and look. This one is about St. Elizabeth. What is one sacrifice that St. Elizabeth made? And um, for whom would you make a sacrifice and why? That's something good to think about. And the bottom, complete the sentence with the words from the box. Can you do that? Now, there's a couple students that don't have their book at home. Um, it was left at school. So your moms and dads have access to the ebook. So you can open the ebook on your computer and on a sheet of paper, you can write your answers down 
for these and mom or dad can take a picture of that and they can send it to me and I will use that for your assignment. Last but not least, let me pull up Edlio. I wanted to show you this cursive. So yesterday, how did you do writing January, February, March, April, May, June? So you can go, um, if you have room on the front side of your lined paper, if you don't, you can go on the back side and you're gonna practice the rest of the months. Just write them one time. If you wanna write them more than one time, you can do that too. But I at least want you to practice um, July, August, September, October, November, and December in cursive, okay? And there's a Charlotte's Web, the next chapter. If you're in, interested in listening to it, it's optional, you don't have to. And also there is authors in April going on. Um, so I put that information up. I believe it's 1115. Is that what I said earlier? Yeah, so I put that information up. You can check out authors in April. Um, I think that's it. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.